Good evening, everyone. Ken McCall, the Jazz Vinyl Lover, back again to talk about Hank Mobley. Um, it's very warm here in New York City. It's rather insane, actually. Middle of March, and uh, you can, like, fry eggs in the sidewalk. I'm all exaggerating a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about Hank Mobley, and going forward, I'm probably going to talk about just single records. Some of my very favorite records uh, of all time, really, in jazz. And this is one of them, Hank Mobley's Roll Call, recorded in 19... Workout, recorded in 1961 with uh, Hank Mobley on tenor sax, Grant Green on guitar, Wynton Kelly on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, and Philly Joe Jones on drums. We're talking a world-class lineup here. Basically, uh, except for Grant Green, we're talking Miles Davis's group. And uh, that's one of the reasons this album kicked so hard. Mobley made a lot of great records. Uh, he was born in Georgia. He uh, grew up in Elizabeth, New Jersey, which is still a really gritty town. Um, he died in 1986. He made 20 albums for Blue Note. Uh, he, before in Blue Note, he was on Prestige, I believe. Those albums have been reissued. I don't really know those well. But his Meat and Potatoes, his great sessions are on Blue Note. And I will show you a few of those um, in somewhat order. I don't, have the, I don't have all of them, but I don't think there's a bad Hank Mobley record. This is a 10-inch that came out for a record store day. Then in some kind of order, starting in the late 50s, with Donald Byrd and Lee Morgan. This is an, another essential record, Peckin' Time. Uh, they share the bill, Lee and Hank. Uh, many think this is his best album. It's one of his best albums, Soul Station. This is just, this is a perfect record in so many ways, just as Workout is a perfect record. A perfect combination of players, of songs, of arrangements, of recording session uh, technique, and you know, Hank Mobley is such a beautiful player. Leonard Feather described, described him as the middleweight champion of the tenor sax. That wasn't a put down. Some people think it is. It meant to say against, you know, Coltrane's the heavyweight. Coltrane had a much heavier sound. Coltrane was probably a more serious guy, even though we do see photos of him laughing. But Hank Mobley just seems to have kind of grooved his way through life. Even though he died of pneumonia, he was a pretty bad alcoholic at the end. And I was just thinking, you know, the, 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 the highest selling record, the record that's pulled the most money of all time at eBay was Hank Mobley's uh, Blue Note 1568, which I don't have. Uh, that album pulled 7,300 pounds, uh, uh, or the equivalent of $7,300 in the UK. It pulled about $7,200 in the US at one of Fred Cohen's Jazz Record Center um, auctions. Can you imagine when Hank Mobley would think about this today? A scuffling jazz musician, I don't think he was a star in his time, even though he was a wonderful player. To think that he had the highest selling record at, at eBay of all time, it ain't kind of blue, it ain't Duke Ellington, it's Hank Mobley. Um, and part of the reason that record is so valuable because not, not many of the 1568s were pressed. So that makes a record go up in value when there aren't many to begin with. Um, and that one to me is more of just a blowing session. It's not a masterpiece like this record. But we'll, we'll continue with the uh, Hank Mobley records. Is that because I was there? Work out. Oh, I didn't. No Room for Squares, The Turnaround, both tremendous records. Dippin', a great record, not as great as the other ones. All, you know, similar sort of lineups. Uh, Caddy for Daddy, one of the great Reed Miles covers. You know, he always played with the top session players of Blue Note. Uh, this one has Lee Morgan, Curtis Filler, McCoy Tyner, Bob Cranshaw, Billy Higgins. I mean, what do you want? Um, he has a couple albums on the dreaded Rainbow LT series, but they're, I think there's, these are great sessions. A slice of the top. People hate this artwork. What's wrong with the artwork? You know, what's wrong with it? In a uh, high voltage, another great session. Uh, reach out. He's in Paris. What do we have here? The Flip. There's probably some Boogaloo and Bossa Nova tunes on there. And Thinking of Home. Okay, that's a horrible cover. Thinking of Home, what? He grew up in Georgia. It's like snow-covered Scandinavia. What the fuck? Anyway, uh, back to Workout. Um, this has five tunes by Philly Joe. Ha! <laughs> five tunes by Hank Mobley. And then he covers the, the best things in life are free. I, you know, when I was a drummer, I studied this record because Philly Joe Jones is just relentless. Ding, 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 ding. He just like has the perfect 
uh, ride cymbal beat, huge beat. That's why he played with so many people. There was a sense of happiness in his beat. You know, Billy Higgins, people think about him being kind of happy, but Billy Higgins, as great, he was, as great as he was as a drummer, he's kind of one note, everything he played. But Philly Joe Jones just took command of every session and was never at a loss for words. You know, it's the great Miles Davis twofer that came out in the 80s. And uh, they, uh, there's an alternate take of, I think it's two bass hit, uh, with Miles Davis and Philly Joe Jones. They're trading fours at the end. And it's just hilarious. They just keep trading fours on and on and on and on and on. And then finally, they just give up. But, uh, you know, Philly is up to the task to play with anybody. And he's great on this record. So, uh, you know, the record starts with Workout. It's just pure, upbeat, swinging hard. And this is also one of the best Grant Green records. I'm not a big fan of Grant Green. I think he's kind of thick. And he sort of plods along, especially on his own albums. I want to hold your hand. Good Lord, somebody hand me a needle and wake that guy the fuck up. That shit is asleep, and I don't like his tone very much. But on this record, you know, I feel like he's got such a hard rhythm section driving so hard that, you know, even Grant Green sounds great on this record. But this is really some of his primo playing. Really beautiful, well-thought-out solos. Uh, workout, and then, uh-huh, the second tune on side one is kind of a loping shuffle. Uh, smoking on the second side opens up. That's another up-tempo track. The Best Things in Life Are Free is kind of played sort of whimsically as a half-tempo ballad, but then it ends with Grease and Easy, which is just that. Another just kind of medium, pulsating. This is just a beautiful example of bop, early 60s bop. And one of the great cover photos of all time. Is that not a wonderful cover photo? That is really something. Um, uh, when I recommend records to people, if they've never heard jazz before, I might give them a hang. I'm more likely to suggest they get Soul Station because it's just so easy to get into. This is such a... You know, Art Blakey's just in the pocket, lays it back, and Hank just, he's soaring. He's, he's got that creamery, creamy, buttery sound to his tenor. And he just seems really, really lighthearted. You wonder if he was really lighthearted in person because he's just such a lyrical, gifted player who was really underrated in his day. And you figure back in the 60s, the major guys who got all the attention were, you know, Stan Getz, Sonny Rollins, even Wayne Shorter. Um... You know, those were the guys that got the attention. Hank was always in the background. He made as many records. I think, if anything, Hank Mulby's records hold up much better than, in the in the large scheme of things, the records of Stan Getz. Um, but he made some great records, but he also made just some sleepy shit on Verve. And I don't know. Even though some of the early Verve sessions he did were really great. Uh, I do have Music Matters pressings. Here's one. And it's nice to see all these photos of all these cats smiling. I mean, you can see they're all having a really good time. Hank looks very thoughtful. Hank looked thoughtful. But most of the time, I think Hank was just having a blast. Isn't that an amazing photo? Anyway, I'm going to continue with my uh, Jazz Vinyl Lovers Best of series. Thanks for uh, checking in. Thanks for uh, uh, joining my group, Jazz Vinyl Lovers, on Facebook. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, please let me know. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>